So we see athletes all the time using ice baths and ice chambers as a part of their recovery. Apart from how on earth can they put themselves through that, the other key question is, does it work? So hey, let's find out. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So imagine a sauna, but filled with ice cold air. Now, for many of us, that sounds like it's unbearable. But for athletes, this is a part of their regular routine recovery. We're talking about ice baths, ice chambers, or what's commonly referred to as whole body cryotherapy. So let's check out some evidence first. Why do we actually use it in practice? Well, Quissien and McHugh highlight that the key aims of whole body cryotherapy is to reduce pain, soreness, and perhaps DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, after sporting activity or exercise. And generally, this is linked to reducing the temperature of our body and, of course, our muscles to reduce the inflammatory effect on our muscle tissue. So the suggestion is that whole body cryotherapy can increase the rate of recovery. So this is super important for when rapid recovery is needed for our athlete. Let's say that they've played a match on the Saturday, they've got a week of training to do and they've got to perform really well the next Saturday. Cryotherapy can really come into its own to reduce that pain and muscle soreness to allow them to get the most out of their week. We also know, however, that there are adverse effects of whole body cryotherapy if it's overused. Stick around to watch the video and find out more. So the main piece of research I'd like to present to you is from that of Hack, Ribbons and Barros from 2018, where they completed a literature review looking into the physiology and the effectiveness of whole body cryotherapy. So their review review involving more than 20 articles found that the positive effects of whole body cryotherapy come into their own through regulation of the inflammatory process, making sure that we don't get too much inflammation to have an effect on our body after that bout of sporting activity. So some of those positive effects included reduced pain, reduced DOMS, increased tissue oxygenation and reduced levels of creatine kinase or CK. Now CK is an enzyme that gets released into the blood when we have muscle injury. So less CK means less muscle injury. Okay, cool. So how long should we be using it for? Now, whilst the researchers said that there wasn't an exact precise treatment protocol that they could advise everyone, the suggestion was around two and a half minutes of cryotherapy. This would be split between a room that was, say, minus 110 degrees centigrade and a different room which was minus 140 degrees centigrade and spending about 30 seconds in each room across that two and a half minute period. So another study by Self et al from 2014 also looked at two and a half minutes and they suggested spreading that over 30 seconds in a minus 65 degree centigrade room and then two minutes in a minus 135 degrees centigrade room. And I've also seen lots of studies talk about the three minute mark too. However, our researchers did say that they wouldn't advise longer than four minutes and that is because of the effect of hypothermia and the adverse effect of this on muscle tissue. So we definitely shouldn't be using it for that period of time. Okay, so when in our athlete's schedule should it be used? Well, our authors highlighted that ideally 60 minutes after exercise is the optimum time. Now, this is quite an interesting one because that probably means not immediately after a match. 60 minutes after the actual sporting event, our athletes are either having a debrief, they're getting changed, or they're having a team talk, or they might be already traveling back home after the event. So perhaps it's therefore used the next day after the next day's training. That's sometimes what we see in the professional sporting world. How much of a difference in effect that has? I'm not sure. Now, really interesting. This research highlights the use of whole body cryotherapy as a recovery tool, but there's lots of talk about the negative effects that whole body cryotherapy can have in the short term on performance. And that totally makes sense to me. We're putting these athletes into really low temperatures, minus 110, minus 140 degrees centigrade. Their muscles are gonna get seriously cold. So it's no surprise that when their muscles are really cold, they're not gonna be able to sprint faster or jump further. In fact, there could be the possibility of injury in that itself. So therefore, the timing of this so far is definitely in a recovery tool rather than as a warm-up tool. 
Now also, really interestingly, there could be the times to use whole body cryotherapy for our non-sporting athletes. If we look at systemic conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or frozen shoulder or fibromyalgia, these are conditions where we want to reduce the inflammatory effect. And in fact, there have been studies by that of Rivera et al 2018 and Vitanet et al 2018 where they found positive effects of whole body cryotherapy on patients with fibromyalgia. So definitely one to look out for in the future. So guys, that's it from me. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribing to our channel, and make sure you check us out on social media, Instagram at Clinical Physio, and our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.